Hello and welcome to another Planning Appeal case study video. I'm John Peters and in this video, I'm going to explain how we overcame a recent refusal by Enfield Council for one of our clients. This planning appeal was to overcome the refusal for an extension of roof to form a gable end at both sides, together with a front and rear dormer with Juliet balcony involving raising the ridge to match the adjoining house and raising the front gable wall and ridge to minor front roof and roof lights that were refused by the local authority Enfield Planning Department. Our client was initially booked in for a free no obligation consultation to run through the refusal reasons that had been used by Enfield Council to evaluate if the appeal was viable or if an alternative option would be best suited. The free no obligation consultation, which in this case took around 25 minutes, found that the case was viable for appeal to the planning inspectorate, taking the decision process away from Enfield Council Planning Department. This case was refused for the following reasons. The proposed roof extension by reason of its excessive Cumulative bulk, mass and prominent sighting at the end of the street would result in a top heavy form of development to the original property and over appear, appear overly dominant, obtrusive and incongruous with the street scene and ultimately fails to be compliant with the character and appearance of the subject property and the wider area. In a way, this is a classic subjective refusal, something we see a lot of at Heal Planning. As an organisation, We've been finding recently a number of errors in various local authority planning officers' decisions. These areas do help us support our cases. We do suspect the increase in these errors has been caused by cutbacks at local authorities and unprecedented increases in workloads that are piled on the reduced numbers of planning officers. Many of you are repeatedly stating to us that they've had little or no correspondence throughout the application process. And the first thing you knew about rec receiving a refusal was uh, when we sent you a letter or when you got an email. Uh, with planning appeals, experience matters. Our specialist appeals team, who handle over 2.5% of all planning appeals in England and Wales that are currently produced and submitted, start by producing a comprehensive and robust appeal statement that in this specific case covered 27 pages, just over 7,600 words. It's a proper big appeal, this one. It is important to detail in the appeal statement where the local authority failed in their assessment of the case and how and where possible both local and national policy apply in favour of the appeal. Additionally, if possible, bring in similar cases that the planning inspectorate found in favour of at appeal. Obviously, with the back catalogue we have of our wins, we're able to use these cases and what the inspector said in them as additional argument to support your case at appeal. Recently, we had a client state that a competitor had said to them that they use our wins to help their appeals. I suppose that's a compliment to our team, but obviously with that method, it does not give them the underlying knowledge to be able to adapt arguments to a specific case. It is important to know that no two cases are the same and the arguments need to be produced for specific cases in hand. Once an appeal statement is completed, we send the document to our client asking them to check that they're happy for us to submit the case to the planning inspectorate. If we need to add any additional information that the client may have forgotten to previously supply to us, it's done at this point and the case is then submitted. It's vitally important that all documents and responses are submitted on time throughout the process as failure to do so will result in appeal not being successful. Something we hear about often when people attempt to appeal for the first time. Always ensure you use a professional who has considerable experience of appeals. It is worth asking them for some recent planning appeal case studies like you find on our website. Due to the large number of cases we represent, we have a dedicated team that liaises with the planning inspectorate on a daily basis. For this appeal, an independent planning inspector from the planning inspectorate visited the site on the 27th of March and we're really pleased to confirm that the appeal was upheld and the permission granted on the 18th of April in a short two-page appeal decision notice. If you'd like to find out if we can help you with your planning appeal, complete our online website form on our website, www.planningappealsuk.com, and our new case support team will arrange for a free, no obligation consultation with one of our planning appeal assessment professionals. Would you like to find an appeal case study for a certain type of application or even a selected area? 
We have so many and not all of them are published or filmed, but that does not mean we can't show you what you're looking for. Ask our planning appeal assessment professional during your free no obligation consultation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this planning appeal case study video. I look forward to producing another one very shortly. Thanks a lot. Bye.